controlling version than some that we've seen. He's not playing. Um, he's not playing with with reckoners. He is playing with some essence scatters, some dissipates, a lot of counter rewinds, a lot of counter magic for a blue white red list. Yeah, and he's got the uh, one copy of the Aurelia and one copy of Thundermore Hellkite, which we've been seeing some of these blue red white decks. They've been cutting their three drops. Uh, and just playing a little more higher end threats yep. to be a little more robust. Well, it's important with these decks to close out games pretty quickly. Yeah, they that's can struggle true. with that. Yeah. And Orin is on Jund, a uh, typical Jund deck that you've been seeing uh, Reed Duke and or uh, Owen Turgenwald being very big proponents of. Two Arbor Elf version, basically acting as a fifth and sixth far seek. Uh, an assortment of removal from Bonfire Dam to Mizium Mortars to Murder that's to an Dreadboar. Interesting, interesting numbers there. I mean, only two Bonfires, um, only one Liliana. I think that's unusual. Uh, yeah, a lot of this that I've seen. I think we saw a couple of. Uh, well, Oren's Oren's very close with some of the Florida players, and I know last week in Orlando, um, John Culver and a couple other players uh, made top eight with a similar Jun deck, where they had two Garricks and one Liliana as their sort of Planeswalker mm -hmm. mix. Um, so, and he, I believe he has two Vampire Nighthawks main, and as well, along with two Ground Seals, which we saw. Yep. Uh, read to play at the mock store. Yeah, he's definitely been pioneering those ground seals, man. And here we can see Nick off to have a slow start. No, uh, no shock land. So his M his M duels are all coming to play tapped. Definitely slowing him down a little bit. Can't play his, his thing twice here on turn two. Um, whereas Oren has kind of the optimal start of a turn two Farsi kind of getting him off to the races. Yeah, and this is one of the reasons I I, I think Jun's a fine deck, but it's very frustrating to play against or even watch because sometimes. If the deck doesn't have a far seek, it looks pretty bad sometimes. It can definitely be very clunky. Um, so, but again, turn two far seek, and Nick doesn't even have access to Essence Scatter, which we know he has in his deck. Yep. Um, but because of those M13 duels, he he actually needed to have them come, all come into play tap. And Orton wasting no time here after an aggressive start, just running that that Olivia out there, and just to start attacking for three. Yeah, and a lot of these blue red red control decks aren't playing four copies of Searing Spirit. Um, some of them are playing three. Some of them are cheating, uh, even going down as low as one yep. or two copies, uh, similar to a list that Jerry T posts. That was what we, I mean, our list when we were testing for the PT was, was on the, you know, one Searing Spear, one or two Pillar of Flames. Mm -hmm. We were, we cut a lot of the burn out of the deck. And I think that, that for a while was conventional. Now it's, I think it's gone back to, you know, typically of three, mm -hmm. maybe four, but, um, and here we can see Nick is playing three. So really good start from Oren here. Nick doesn't have, um really much going on in the form of uh, removal and now Oren has both a Thrag Tusk and an Olivia in play. Ooh, but there we see a great draw in that in that Supreme Verdict, but still oh, the no, land's coming I don't think, yep. Wow. So this is awkward. Does he want to use an Azorius Charm to mitigate to kind of balance his life total? That's going to interact poorly with his, his, his Verdict land. He probably just has to take this eight. Maybe even more. Oren could just decide to ping the Thrag Tusk twice to make it, make it ten. Potentially, if he doesn't want to commit more to the board. Yeah, it looks like Orin has a far seek. He also has a bonfire, so maybe he wants to try to do enough damage here where bonfire might be able to finish it off. Um, but a hard cast bonfire is going to have a hard time killing anyone, obviously, with that double X casting cost. Yeah, but he's going to be able to do eight here at least, dropping Nick to nine. Maybe he wants to drop him down to eight. It looks like he and is then... pinging here. So, yeah, because even a Supreme Verdict will get uh, still net Orin a 3 3 beast. Yep. So he's going to drop Nick to eight here, um, and theoretically, even if Nick does have a Supreme Verdict, he will be able to drop Nick to five next turn. Um, and again, Bonfire for three, you know, puts him in a little more range to just uh, top deck, you know, a second Bonfire, or maybe um, just killing him with a top deck. What do you think uh, about the decision? Wolfram. What do you think about the decision here to leave two up instead of picking again? Is he playing around Unsummon there? Is he afraid of getting the Olivia Unsummoned and not be able to recast it? If, what? I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I like that play because, again, you, you, there's not really many one day, there's not many uh, instant speed spells that can't kill two toughness or one toughness. So if you're going to ping once, you might as well ping twice. Yep. Um, he might be afraid of unsummon, but that's not really a popular card. Um, so I, I think you might want to be a little more aggressive, but especially if you're going to if your if your plan is to just cast far seek this turn anyway. Yeah, I feel like we may have left left a point on the table there, but I'm not I'm not sure. Interesting. Saying go, not playing Supreme Verdict here. So, this is a confusing line to me. So, we didn't Azorius Charm last turn. I think he, he might be trying to. I think he might be trying to be a little too greedy here because he wants to deal with both the Thrag Tusk and the Token. Because now he has an Essence Scatter and a Dissipate. I just don't think he has enough time. I, I agree.
because Orin can just potentially call this and just ping with Ragdust three times and just try to kill Nick. Oh, that's a very aggressive line. Nick yeah, has another if, Charm if or... he wasn't willing to do that last turn, I'm not sure how much he's willing to do this turn. Yep. Especially with this line of play, Nick could be um, telegraphing that he doesn't have a Supreme Verdict, possibly. Um, Nick obviously has an Essence Scatter and another land. Because of the island, the Glacial Fortress will be able to come into play and tap. So yep. I think Nick's plan is to just hope that he doesn't have burn to kill me, uh, cast a uh, Supreme Verdict, and then Essence Scatter the Thraktos, which is a reasonable line. Sure, but the... Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I actually I agree with you there. So here they just kind of, how much do we want to do? Put him down to three. We're we gonna keep going. Interesting. It looks like we are gonna keep going. Well, and now, and now, again, he has the bonfire, so bonfire becomes very relevant right here. And, and now, though, I think we're seeing you know that extra point we could have done last turn mm -hmm. certainly having a certainly having an impact here. But I agree. I mean, just being able to kill him now through. With next turn, just bonfiring him for two. It's going to be hard for Nick to come back from here. Yeah, and he, he has a dissipate, but he won't have enough mana to cast Supreme Verdict and dissipate. So it looks yep. like Bonfire should be able to finish things off here. I feel like that was a greedy line for Nick. I would have much rather just cast Supreme Verdict there, taking the three from the, the token, and then Azor on the token the next turn. Yeah, because you have to assume that Orin's probably going to go for max damage there just because... If you had two Azorius Charms or a Seeing Spirit, you probably would have used them already. Right. So it's unlikely you drew a second one. Orin probably considering whether or not there is a negate in the main deck of Nick's deck. Possibly Syncopate, but I think even he has enough mana to play around Syncopate. He does, yeah. Just Bonfire for two. Yep. Yep. So I think that's the spot where Nick, I mean, obviously playing, I don't think Nick missed those lines. I think Nick was just choosing what level to play on, chose to go. Yeah, it was an aggressive line, I think, but may have leveled himself a little bit there. I think he tried to get a little trickier than he needed to be mm -hmm. and got himself into a little bit more trouble than he could, get himself, he could handle. I think sometimes when you see players who feel like they're very far behind, they'll try to take more of those aggressive lines to feel sure. like they need to. When in reality, maybe if you're just a little more patient, you, you, you could be okay. You know, again, your start was very slow, Orin's start was very good, but you have cards that can pull you out of this, so maybe if Absolutely. you're a little more patient, you don't have to take those type of lines. So now looking at the sideboard here for Nick, we're looking at two Thunderbar Hellkites, two Negates, two Clones. Interesting card in this kind of matchup. Uh, three is it Staticasters, three Dispels, one Pillar of Flame, one Supreme Verdict, and one more Aurelia, the War Leader. What do you think Nick wants to bring in here? When I would, whenever I was testing Blue Red White against Jund, what I felt was most important was having permission because, again, they don't have Cavernous Souls, so you, cards like Essence Scatter, Rewind, Dissipate, they're actually pretty good against Jund, particularly if Jund doesn't have to turn to Farseek because Jund really isn't that... Uh, Jund is fairly top-heavy. Mm -hmm. I mean, Huntmaster, Thraktus, their threats are pretty high-end, so if a card like Essence Scatter or Negate to stop a Rakdos Return or, or Primal Prima Hunter, which are cards that are very good against you, yep. I, I think Negate has to come in. I kind of like Thundermaw and Aurelia in this matchup because just go big. they're just, you know, just go big. You know, typical against, against any sort of green-based deck, being able to go big in the air is usually a solid way to win the game yep. because you can close it out quickly. And, you know, it has a big enough toughness to get around cards like Mizzia Mortars or Bonfire sure. of the Dam. And presumably, you know, Orin's going to be boarding out a little bit of a spot removal, probably. Uh, not necessarily, but one thing I like to be able to do is, you know, you trade one for one. Both of them is Jun's a one for one kind of deck. Mm -hmm. And then you either pop off a large revelation to mm -hmm. win, or your last, you one for one a bunch, then your last threat, which survives, is a Hel Hel or Aurelia, which will just kill them on its own. Yeah, and, and I, I really like that. And I think if you consider that you're, you're probably expecting the Jun deck to probably bring in slaughter games for your Sphinx of Revelations, mm -hmm. you kind of need more threats because sure. you can't really rely on those Sphinx of Revelations as much yep. anymore. Because there's a good chance they could just cast uh, slaughter games and suddenly you have like three copies of Think Twice as your only card drawing, and it's really hard for you to try to go one on one when that's all yep. you have. What do you think then about, I mean, you probably want to board out those Pillar of Flames. Pretty low impact in this kind of a matchup. Yeah, I don't think Pillar of Flame is that great in this the matchup. The Zorius Charm could probably come out potentially as well, I, I or actually, even Searing Spear. I really don't like Augur Volus in this matchup, because the problem is you're bringing in cre more creatures, and Augur Volus just isn't very good against Jund. Obviously, it's good if you hit for once, and then you're able to Restoration Angel and hit again. Yeah. But the problem is, if you blank with Augur Volus, just having a 1-3 is so terrible against a deck that's bringing in Duress, that has Liliana's Veil, that has Rakdos yeah. Return. You just can't afford to 
brick with a 1-3. Yep. It's just too devastating. So I think I think Augur Bowls is pretty bad in this matchup. I don't really like Pillar Flame. Yeah, I think Pillar Flame definitely goes. Yeah. The one upside, so you mentioned Liliana the Veil when you were talking about Augur Bowls. I actually think that's one reason why the card keeps a little bit of a value. It's nice having him to throw around is to toss to the, the Edict to protect your better guys like your Thundermore Hellkites and your Aurelias. Yeah, I, I, there's I, some, I, there's I think there's a little bit yeah, of upside I think, there. I think there's a little, I think there's a little upside there, but generally I think that of the, a card, usually you can get like a Restoration Angel or Snapcaster in play at that point sure. to sort of uh, mitigate uh, cards like Liliana the Veil. Sure. Um, and again, there's not, I, I, a card like um, uh, Thundermore Hellcut or Aurelia are usually going to close the games out pretty quickly. Yep. And if you're in the position where you're casting those cards, generally you've controlled the board state enough where they don't have enough pressure. So I'm fine with them just down ticking a Liliana and yep. killing my guy because I'm generally going to be pretty far ahead at that point. The last card I'm wondering about is what about clone? I don't love clone in this matchup. Obviously it's good against killing uh, an Olivia. opposing Olivia, yeah. copying a Thrak Tusk is fine. Um, but or copying your own Hellkite potentially. Yeah, but the, the problem with clone is that if, if, you're, if you're ahead, it's not really going to help you that much and it doesn't help you against cards like Rakdos Return or Garak Primal sure. Hunter, which are really devastating against you. Um, so I think it's fine, but I think it's probably going to sit in the board for. I, I think generally clone only really wants to come in against decks with Angel Serenity. And the last question for you have for you is Supreme Verdict. How's that? How's that in this matchup? What do you think about there? Uh, I don't. I don't love Supreme Verdict. I think uh, Mizia Mortars is kind of useful to at cleaning up some. Mm -hmm. you know, Garrick Prime Hunter sort of gets out of control. Um, it helps you clean it up, and maybe one of your flyers can actually kill the Prime, the Prime Hunter. Sure. Uh, I, I don't know if I'd board in another Supreme Verdict. I might even cut one of the ones I have in the yep. main, just because again, uh, Oren's really not going to be overloading the board with creatures. Sure, he's I generally going to be trying to disrupt your hand with cards like Duress, Liliana, Rakdos Return, and he has cards like Underworld Connections too that can just reload his hand. Yep. So generally, I don't, I don't think Supreme Verdict's probably good enough. Here we see Nick taking a mulligan, going to six. Oren looks like he's thinking about a seven. Uh, one downside, I think, for Nick, he doesn't have, you mentioned Underworld Connections, doesn't have any Detention Spheres to kind of take that card out. Mm -hmm. If that card resolves, it's sticking in play. And that could be problematic and give Oren a real advantage in the late game. Yeah, because if, if Oren's able to resolve an Underworld Connection and then Slaughter Game Sins Violation, suddenly he's drawing more cards, he has life gain, he has yep. more removal. Suddenly his deck is just the better control deck. Yep. And Nick just can't do anything. Yeah, my guess here for, for Nick's sideboarding, he's probably going to cut the two Pillar Flames. My guess is, I agree with you, he probably cuts one Verdict. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if he cuts, like, two Azorius Charms. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to bring in the Aurelia, both Thunderbar Hellkites, both Negates, and I would not be surprised if he brings in those clones. I think they actually do have a little bit of value here, and maybe cuts the Augur Bolses to make that room. Yeah, no, I, again, I think Clone definitely has some value, particularly if you think that they have cards like... Um, th if they have Thundermore Hellkites of their own, you know, yep. be able to clone it and then using a Mizzium Mortars to kill the, the Thundermore because of the ability. Um, well, yeah, that's a good interaction. Th that, you know, you could randomly, and plus, if you have an Aurelia in play, um, copying their Thundermore Hellkite with a just, clone, it's, just another, it's an additional threat yep. you can have. So, yeah, and again, it's just another threat. Copying a Thraktus is always yep. good against Jones. Looks like Nick here kept on six, very mana heavy hand, shuffling around a lot of lands up there in the front. Oren also has a lot of lands, it looks like. Um, so it might be off to some, a pair of slow starts here, although it looks like it's a murder that he just drew. Yeah, it looks like a, a, a lot of lands, a Sphinx Relation, and a Mizium Mortar. So, or is that even a... I think it's a Supreme Verdict. It might be a Supreme Verdict. So yeah, very... Ooh, not an ideal hand against Jun. Or had the Farsi mm -hmm. hiding there, which is certainly what he wants to be doing here on turn two. Uh, looking here at... At, at or in sideboards, when you get a chance to get to that, you know, you mentioned those Underworld Connections, certainly very powerful. Also has two Duresses. Another Rakdos return and those a pair of slaughter games. And usually, I haven't seen a lot of one Vraska. Yeah, kind of a spicy one. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I'm not sure uh, what matchup he'd really want that card in. Maybe in the mirror. Um, in this matchup, though, I wouldn't expect him to probably bring it in. I agree with you uh, there. Definitely Underworld. Definitely Duress. Um, probably the slaughter games as well. And maybe probably that Rakdos return is my guess. Yeah, that's, and, and probably actually that Liliana too, right? So that's eight cards he's looking to bring in potentially. It's a lot of cards to come in. Yeah. Here we actually see, a, sorry to cut into the game here, we see a Slaughter Games being cast on turn three. Probably naming Sphinx's Revelation would be my guess, seeing that Nick's hand is really blank. Yeah, I, I, I'm su I, honestly, I'm surprised Nick would keep this hand because generally, if you don't have a card like Think Twice or Sphinx of Revelation in your opener, obviously it's not going to be amazing, but... Uh, but he was already on six on the play. I think that's pretty tough. And then I'm not sure you actually want Revelation in your opener because a lot of times this is going to happen to you. Yeah. 
And it's actually nice not having one yet because you know that if they have slaughter games, they're going to play it on as soon as they can, mm -hmm. basically inevitably. It's a kind of the, the typical Jun line. And they're going to name the search revelation. So you don't lose a card at least from your hand this way. Yeah, and this is a great start for Oren because Nick's hand is basically just creature removal, yep. which isn't great against uh, cards like Rakdos Return or right. Dark Primal Hunter. Which are his trumps here. And we can see as he thumbs through the deck here, both clones are in the deck. We saw at least two Thunder Maws and an Aurelia so far. I haven't noticed any Augur Boluses, but I may have just missed them. But it looks like he kind of took out the pillars. It looks like he took out maybe even all the Searing Spears, uh, which is more or less what we expected. Yeah, and Azorius Charm, uh, again, I don't think it's great in this matchup, but I do like having a couple of copies just because it can deal with cards like... Uh, you or, can't you can't just lose to Olivia. Yeah, yeah, Olivia getting out of hand, you want to be able to reset that. Looking at, at Oren's main deck now, the things he might be sideboarding out, do you think he wants to take out Ground Seal? I mean, Nick still has three Snapcaster Majors, or probably has some number of Snapcasters, and Oren doesn't know the, the full details. Um, is it worth leaving Ground Seal, or do you think those get the... Get no, the I, don't, I don't like Ground Seal in this matchup. I don't like. I don't love the uh, Vampire Nighthawk. I don't yep. really love Bonfire in this matchup either. Even though it won him the first game, generally I don't think it really does that much. I agree. So I think those are all easy cuts. Although the one thing with the Nighthawks, they are good against Aurelia. That's true, but I think Oren has enough removal where he's not that concerned. Sure, about Aurelia. Spot removal. Yeah, I think his game plan is just uh, overwhelm Nick with discard and then use my removal on your few threats, because sure. there's really not that many cards he has to deal with. No, I think that makes, that makes a lot of sense in the game plan. Interesting, Huntmasters here still, those, I mean, obviously, a nice way to apply pressure. Yeah, and it looks like Nick's gonna be forced to Mizium Mortars here. He hit, he, well, he does have a, a Restoration Angel. But he can't let that Huntmaster flip, I yeah, think. Yeah, so I think he has to just cast Mizium Mortars here. Oh, no. Oh, wow, so he does allow it to flip. Again, taking taking a kind of a, an ambitious well, line. Well, again, I, I don't think it's that, that bad because he has the Mizium Mortars, so he could overload the Mizium Mortars next turn. True. So if Orin, you know, tries, to, if Orin has a Garrick Primal Hunter, it's actually completely reasonable for him to just play Primal Hunter, make a 3-3, three, three, and then Nick will be able to cast a Restoration Angel, so, attack it down to a 1, and then Mizium Mortars. Sure. So I think Orin probably going to attack with both creatures here, so just try to see if that, if, that, if that Resto comes out. He drew a Slaughter Games, and he knows about that Mortars in, in Nick's hand, mm -hmm. so he might just use it as an excessive Duress here. Uh, well, he knows that he knows the mortars is in hand, and he didn't use it on the huntmaster. He allowed the huntmaster to flip, so he's got to expect that. Okay, well the overload's coming. Do I just slaughter games getting rid of mortars now? Is it worth it? Do yep. I do it main phase to see if there is a restoration angel? Ooh, and the wolf run makes it so that the resto can't even block the wolf token here, profitably. So yeah, he has to take the damage now. And now we're, I think we're going to see that slaughter games get cast. Now he does have a choice here. Is one named Thunderbolt Hellkite take out one of Nick's remaining win conditions? Or does he take it or take out the mortars? I think it's pretty hard not to take the mortars. I, I, I like I like taking the mortars here. You yeah. know you're gonna hit and your creature and your four four is gonna stay in play. Yeah. So I think it's pretty hard to resist that when you're already so far ahead on cards. Yeah, yeah, you have to do that. I think it's worth it. And especially if you have a wolf run in play, I mean your 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 threat it, Nick's already at twelve life, so looks like at least two Searing Spears and two Azorius Charms still in, in Nick's deck here after sideboard. So far he's shaved both those numbers down a little bit. Maybe have all three spears in. It looks like he has Aurelius Fury in his deck, too, which is something that we see a lot of. One in his main deck. So actually, Roberto Gonzalez, who finished ninth at the Pro Tour on tiebreaks, was playing at least one, maybe even two Aurelius Furies in his blue-white red list. Uh, I know it wasn't very common. I didn't know if anyone else was really doing that, but it uh, did to great effect, actually. So Resto Angel comes into play at the end of the turn, and Nick draws no miracles. He draws a rewind, a little too late to the party. Yeah, the damage is on the board here. At this point, I, I think Orin's probably comfortable with just going all in on a, on a Kessick Wolf run. Yep. He's gone through, he's kind of seen how many how many Zora's Charms are in the deck. It's the only card he's worried about with respect to his 4-4, because Searing Spear will not do it. He's seen there's only two. I, I would be surprised if he did not. Maybe he doesn't play the Shockland untapped. Maybe he doesn't go quite that deep on it. Yeah, I don't think he needs to. I think he's got the turn to kill regardless. He might be a little afraid of uh, a top deck Aurelia, so he doesn't want to get his life total exactly, too low. Exactly, yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. So, looks like, I, I, I'm not sure what it's in Orin's hand, but. I mean, it's two lands and maybe a spell. I couldn't see the third card, but it's definitely two lands. I do wonder what he's thinking about here, because it looks I, like he's playing with four mana. We wouldn't yeah. play another Huntmaster. If you had one, you don't want to play in a Supreme Court no. like that. Yeah, and I, I think the fact that Nick attacked with the Restoration Angel is uh, 
concerning Orin a little bit. Maybe he's like, well, why did oh, he... Oh, the murder, right, of course. Why did he... Yeah. Well, no, he, he, he made him discard the murder. Murder, murder. Sorry, oh, murder, Orin's yeah, okay. murder. So Orin, Orin's going to do her thing. He's just going to wolf run for two and then leave up murder. Yeah. To protect against any of those kind of overly shenanigans. Well, yes, he can wolf run for one, I believe. Oh, sure, yes, just for one. And he has murder in case Aurelia comes down. Yep. Or a Thundermore or something like that. Okay. So not quite leaving both guys lethal for the next turn, but, but pretty close. Yeah, because Nick's at five now. So... Nick well, now can flip back that, that Ravager of the Fells. Yeah, Lies. so he, he has to think twice. He, he could draw a, uh, a, a Supreme Verdict. That would be the a pretty good draw right here. That is the... Wait, does he say go? Uh, he can't be saying go. I think he has to try to at yeah. least dig for a Supreme Verdict right here. Or at least flip back the Ravager of the Fells so it doesn't doesn't say it. Or he might still just be dead if he does that. Yeah. He's so he, confused. He's, he can murder at the end of... Did he pass? Or? He passed. These lines, I don't... Wow. So, yeah, that, that, that does seem strange. I think you... Unless maybe he, he boarded out one of the Supreme Verdicts, oh, yeah, like he knows said. he's only one. If he knows he only has one... But still, you, don't you still have to dig for like one of your like many creatures? So another thing, Dwight. So we'll just rewind this murder. You can rewind the murder, and then he can flash back the thing twice this turn. Well, either way, well, yeah, the, gonna the hunt master is going to flip no matter what. So, so hunt master flips. So not a bad situation. He's got a blocker, but again, he's going to have to cast. Think twice and hope to draw a searing spear. Yep, because the wolf runs still threatening lethal here. Orin is already charm. And Orin can actually. Let's see, can he? Yeah, he can. No, no, okay. I was thinking he might actually be able to wolf run the blocked wolf or the blocked creature to make sure he can still do two regardless and still represent lethal. And can he right now? So it's two to kill. Four, yeah, he can, oh, if he played the land, oh, that, that wolf is summoning sick. Should have played the land first, I think, untapped. Because then he could have just wolf run the blocked guy to trample yeah. over for three. And that Currently way he's only, yeah, he would only be able to trample over now for if, two. Now if, if Nick hits the Searing Spirit, it's actually quite, it, Orin's down to one guy left. Yeah. Granted, it still has wolf run in play. Still not a great spot for Nick, but much worse than if he had, if he had played that land and could pump the, the blocked wolf. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think, yeah, so only seven mana. He might try to just go all in. I assume he's just go for lethal here on the unblocked one. Oh, no, okay. No, he's playing it safe. Yep, so I actually like that line. Just admit the fact that he probably should have played the land. Okay, we'll just put you to one. Put you one with a rat, with a, with a hunt master in play. You know, that's not a bad spot. Has to be Searing Spear. And he's nope, not. Extends that. Nope. It was, oh, sorry, not dead. He went to yeah. one, as we discussed. All right. And that's why I kind of like it if, if, if Nick would have uh, blocked the Huntmaster there. It definitely should have oh. blocked Huntmaster, I thought. Yeah. So he does draw an Azorius Charm, but still not quite good enough. So he's going to have to dig again. To needs to hit the Supreme Verdict, which may or may not even be in the deck at this point. Yeah. And Orno probably knows, actually. He probably looked as he went through, so Orno yeah. realized so there's he, no Supreme Verdict. Yeah, he probably knows. I still think you not playing that land was a small mistake, but not a huge one at all. Oh, well, it rails Fury. Interesting. And he has not played a land yet, so he actually will be able to Fury the Huntmaster for two, killing it, and then the other two for one each tap. So they won't be able to attack that first, so it gives him another turn. He still has, and he won't be able to cast the Huntmaster in his hand because it really for a really for you kind of... That wolf should be dead, right? The one that got blocked by Restoration Angel? Didn't they trade? I believe so, yeah. I believe the wolf token should be dead. Um, hopefully we can we can signal that over there. I just sort of assume so that's not in play. Because we were talking about how, it would have, yeah. how awkward it was. Now he'll be able to go ahead and kill both the Wolf Token and the Huntmaster. Yeah, so he can kill both creatures in play. Yep, there we go. If he, does it, if he does it on the upkeep, Orin won't even be able to cast any spells that turn. And then he's able to untap. He'll still have an Azorius Charm and another thing twice in his graveyard. So, pretty good draw for Nick. Yeah. Orin, Orin not killing Nick last turn. Might come back to haunt him here. It looks like it, looked like it probably wouldn't matter, but... Aurelius Fury could, could be the difference maker. Yeah, the fact that you can't, like, Aurelius Fury is so much better than Supreme Verdict, right? <laughs> That's, I mean, I would still, I'm still pretty happy with, it is awkward he can't ping Orin for one as part of it, because he needs to kill both the creatures, I think. Yeah. Yep, just two to each of them, you know, go ahead and, and, and ends, ends their lives. So now, I mean, he's still dead to a, to a, um, Rakdos return, being at one life, but, okay, oh, just a Thrag Test. Thrag Test. Thrag and he has a Huntmaster in his hand here, so I think he probably and, just plays Huntmaster. Or no, yeah, it's just Thrag I think, because that way if he rasps, you get the token back and it's still lethal. 
Yeah, I, the Huntmaster can just kill him, though, right? If he if he doesn't have a spell, sure. he can just flip. But we know he's a thing twice in the graveyard. It's true. So it's never flipping. And I think you want it this way. Like, what what's Nick going to have here? Yeah, you just want something to play. A blocker won't do it because of Wolf Run. A removal spell doesn't do it because of the token. He has well, to make Searsburn in the upkeep. He has, an, only... he has an Azorius Charm in his hand. Oh, wow. wow. There it is. <laughs> this game is turning around. Wow. Perfect draw. Aurelius Fury into a clone. So suddenly, Nick Spagnola, even if Orin goes all in with a Wolf Run, Nick also has an Azorius Charm still in his hand. For two different possibilities. One, he can do the lifelink mode to gain five, yep. or can just put that Thractus back on top. Depends on how much mana Orin wants to tap here, because Orin should definitely leave up enough to replay that. He definitely wants to be able to replay his. I believe he has another Thractus or, or, and a Huntmaster in his hand. Or can he threaten lethal here, though? If he can threaten lethal, he might be tempted to go for it. Well, we've, so seen, one, him, two, three, we've seen him four, be five, somewhat ten. cautious in the past. So. He can do seven here. If he moves in, he does seven. And he's moving the mana up to do the six. He's going for it. Wow. Not going to go well for him. So what does Nick do here? Does he gain the five life? So it looks like he's just targeting. So he's on top of the library. So he's at six. The, the hard part here, though, is, I mean, Orin has so many good cards in hand that you can't one for one with, and Nick doesn't have revelations left. So how does he pull ahead in this game? I don't... Yeah, and, and really you know, Nick has another Thraktos in his hand. He's drawing a Thraktos next turn. He still has a Huntmaster, too. Yeah, he's simply... Oh, but there's oh. Restoration Angel. <laughs> wow, Nick is drawing some really, really good cards right now in a row. So oh, here, the awkward thing is there's no... There's no Thraktos can play to copy when the yeah. coin blinks back in. So it's... It's a little dangerous if he just plays Resto and just blocks the Beast. Well, he can, he can, he can, he can block the Beast. See what. Hmm. So, hmm. Just announcing that he has. So I think what he's hoping here is that Orin will read him for the, for the Searing Spear and will not try to kill him. Yeah. And will just hit him for three and play Thrag Tusk. And that's going to be an awesome. Oh, it's actually a Dreadbore in in Orin's hand, not a second Thrag Tusk. So. But Nick can still cast a Restoration Angel targeting the clone. He'll get the 3-3 three, three Beast, and then he can yeah. just target the Restoration Angel when it comes in. So it's still pretty good shape for Nick here, even if, if Orin doesn't play a creature before that combat. Right, because he can't over, yeah, he can't Wolf Run for enough to make it lethal through the Restoration Angel as a blocker. Yeah. He only has, he can, he can pump it for 5 to only make it 8, so Nick would only drop to 2. Yep. If he just blocks the Restoration Angel. Interesting thing here, what if he bluffs and just doesn't block? Which is actually in line with how Nick's been playing. Nick's been playing really aggressively. It would not surprise me if he did just not block. He, so he just he didn't, didn't block. Wow. Didn't, which is what I thought was, yeah. Wow. Great, That's great a really read by nice Nick. Line. Great read by Nick. And it's in line though with how he's been playing. Yeah. He's been playing really aggressively like that the whole time, and here he's getting, getting the maximum value of that clone. And he knows that because he doesn't have those strings of revelations in his deck, he can't win by playing a conventional game. Yeah. He can't trade off resources. He's just too far behind. He has no way to get ahead. And he needs this to happen. You know, the fact that Nick attacked, it I set think it, it set it up. Yeah. I think Orin basically just is getting... Nick is just playing this game perfectly, and Orin's just not able to read anything correctly because, yep. because of the way Nick's playing the game. Yeah, I thought the attack... Nick was trying to rep the Searing Spear with that attack, and... and now it's an interesting spot here. What does he want to do? He has the Thragtus and the Beast on the ground. He's at eight. He's another Think Twice in his graveyard still. Well, let's uh, see what we're thinking. Oh, Ooh, wow. wow. Thunder Maw. And another Restoration Angel. So can we get some kind of board state here where we... Th we're, huh. We really want to be able to rest... So I think we can... Hmm. Possible, obviously, is we can attack with, with the Thunder Maw and the Resto here, and the next turn, blink the clone, copy that Thunder Maw, and kill him. That's what we want to have happen. I don't think we can quite stay alive, though, without blocking with our clone. Uh, Orange uh, has too much damage. I don't know. If, he ha if, it, if that other card is a Restoration Angel, I think it's possible. I, although, I think it might be a Desolate Lighthouse. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, okay. Desolate Lighthouse and a Thunderbolt. And Orin is at 24, so it's going to be... really hard to kill him. Yeah. And he's still representing a lot of damage. He's representing 13 between the two creatures and then the wolf run for five. Mm. So, you know, Nick's going to need six toughness at least. And Orin still has a Huntmaster that's just waiting to come into play. 
something has to attack here. I think the Thundermon and Hellkite should be attacking. So plus five. Or both. Okay. So yeah, they're both coming. So yeah, I think he he has enough toughness to withstand a, a max pump. And it's fine because Orin would lose both his creatures. And even, and just, even if Orin has get a land. Token. But what we know is Orin actually has Dreadbore. Yes. Which will then be lethal. Yeah. I believe. Wait, let's have to do the math. So. Yeah, Dreadbore is basically like a, like a plus two plus two. Dreadbore is plus. So it'll be plus three, eight. So five would come over. Yeah. yeah. I believe that is just lethal. Just another dragger. So Orin's. With, with only one red up. I mean, perfect, 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 perfect. But, I mean, yeah. Nick played a great game, actually, I think. Yeah, I thought Nick Nick played this game really, really well. I mean, obviously, he top deck a couple of cards in a row, but he put himself in a position to just maximize yep. all those cards. So, yeah, no matter no matter how Nick blocks here, I believe Warren should have enough to leave here. Kessick yeah, yeah, Wolfron. Exactly. Yeah, it's a good card. It's very, a good very, card. yeah. Very, very good card. And there's the hand. And there's the hand. Wow. Nick, Nick Canelo, played Nick really everything nice he game. could. Everything really nice could. game, yeah. And Clone, you, you called it. Very, very, very interesting card in this matchup. Nearly pulled it out there. It yeah, had that. that if it was a Restoration Angel, he Instead probably... Of the house, yeah, he might yeah, have... I mean, it, Orin was drawing threat after threat after threat, so it would be yeah. interesting to see, but... Yeah, Thundermaw, you know, he, he knocked his down, down, life down to 18. Yeah, it would have been interesting to see. But... I imagine that was an Aureli instead of a Thundermaw. I mean, oh, wow, whole, yeah. There was, that was an exciting exciting finish. Again, it looked pretty over after yeah. that Slaughter Games on the Mizium Orders. I thought that game was just done. Yeah. But nice play there by Nick. Unfortunately, not quite enough. Falling to Orin Beasley uh, in two games. And we may have maybe kind of another match here. I'm not 